Tell me what's going on behind the scenes right now with Mueller's team. How do they plan for an arrest or could this be a surrender? What's going on? Sure, we've, we've been hearing a lot over the last several hours about what we don't know. We don't know who's been indicted, how many people, what the charges are, exactly when they might be arrested. But it's helpful to focus a little bit on what we know historically is going on behind the scenes right now. So, so first, I can tell you, we know there's been a leak of a grand jury indictment. And although you've had a previous speaker on, a former prosecutor, I believe, who said he thinks this might have been a deliberate leak by the Mueller team, I've got to, I've got to tell you, I respectfully disagree. Hmm. Uh, that person who's saying that doesn't know Bob Mueller, hasn't worked for Bob Mueller. Um, essentially accusing Bob Mueller of deliberately committing a criminal violation by leaking the existence of a grand jury indictment is really misguided. So, so I'm telling you, as someone who's worked for Bob Mueller, he's, a not, he's not a happy camper right now. He's not pleased that this has been released. So how did it get leaked then? I mean, didn't it have to be somebody on the team? Perhaps not with his approval. Right. So with, with 25 years of, uh, of FBI experience, I can tell you we've seen leak, leaks occur out of grand juries from the actual grand jury members, from mm -hmm. court clerks, from FBI agents, from reporters who work uh, FBI agents as sources, administrative help, marshals who protect the, the grand jury room. There's any host of ways this could have happened. But let's, all, let's continue to focus on what, what we do now. So there's going to be ultimately an arrest here. And I can tell you, based on history, that whoever's being charged is under surveillance right now by an FBI surveillance team, even if there's been negotiations with his defense counsel about a surrender. We just see the FBI historically not willing to take the risk that someone's going to head to the airport with a passport and disappear. Well, no, so there's it, surveillance going on. Frank, wouldn't it be standard operating procedure to have people submit their passports if they've had to be considered the grand jury? Can they ask for that without an indictment? Ask for them to give over their passports? Absolutely. It's, it's not uncommon to ask subjects of investigations to voluntarily turn over their passport. But understand that when you do that, you are tipping them off that the indictment's coming soon. Hmm. And often in, at, in, at this caliber of subject, you're likely to get a declination. I'm, I'm not giving you my passport. Okay. Um, so how this all goes down on Monday, how is this person treated? Are they are they allowed to, you know, be snuck through a back entrance or is this something that they want to make a grand gesture and show that they've got this person in handcuffs, not in handcuffs? I mean, how does this go down? So it's a good question, but as is often the case with good questions, the answer is it depends. What does it depend on? It depends on the level of cooperation that's been going on between this particular subject and Mueller's team. So in my public corruption experience with the FBI, if we had adamantly uncooperative subjects who were just thumbing their nose at the offers we were, we were offering them, then we'd show up at their door, take them out in their pajamas, handcuff them, and, and bring them into the office. I've had the exact opposite extreme, where there's negotiated turnovers. They show up at an appointed time. They don't want to come into the FBI office. They want to go directly to the marshal's office. And I've had intermediary co cooperative situations. I had one case in Miami, Florida, where the public official wanted to meet at a, at a donut shop in order to not come directly, ha not have people come to his house, embarrass his family, mm -hmm. and not come directly to the FBI office. So all of that's negotiated. All of that depends on the message that Mueller's team wants to send to this person and to the other subjects and just continue to envelop the main subjects by tightening a grip and saying, this is what's happening and this could happen to you if you don't cooperate. So you know Bob Mueller, you've worked with him. What do you think his message is going to be? How does he want to deliver this? I think, I think historically he's been a methodical strategist. So you're going to see people probably indicted earlier on that are somewhat on the periphery that are going to just tighten the noose. So you're going to flip, you, you typically want to flip those people, get them to be cooperators, talk about the main subjects, make their life easier. And that's, there's no reason to believe that he's not going to do that here. He's going to probably do the peripheral subjects first and move toward the main subjects later. And he's hoping that these peripheral subjects, that they will give information, that they will turn in essence on the, the bigger fish, if you will. Yes, indeed. But I've also seen another interesting uh, occurrence, and that is if you've got that adamant lack of cooperation, knock yourselves out. Somebody telling the FBI, go for it. I'm not helping you. And you've got family members who are criminally exposed of that person, like a Flynn, 
former national security advisor does, you could say, do you understand that your, your son is exposed mm -hmm. here? Do you want us going after him? And if he's that adamant and refuses, you could see a family member, friend or loved one uh, indicted on Monday. All right. Ind uh, arrested on Monday. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.